Thank you very much. It's a very great pleasure to be here this evening. And when Neve contacted me to ask me would I speak at an event called Freedom from, from Conformity, I said, how could I not speak? University College Cork recently has established as its byline a tradition of independent thinking. And what we mean by that is that UCC is a community of about 19,000 students. And when the students leave us, we don't want them going as clones of one another. What we really want is that in their time in UCC, they've learned how to think in independently, creatively, and how to maximise their own contribution to the world. Certainly, freedom from conformity is at the heart of what we do. I have many passions in life. When Neve asked me to speak at this, I said, what will I talk to the, to the audience about? So my first passion in life is my children, my two sons. But I decided you probably didn't want to hear about those. My second passion in life, I'm a scientist, I'm a chemist, right? If you think of the image of, you know, the mad scientist with the white coat and the crazy hair who mixes potions, I'm that kind of scientist. In my daily life, I'm a chemist, we make molecules. I'm obsessed with making left-handed molecules and right-handed molecules. I consider telling you about that, but I decided you wouldn't want to know about that either. My next passion in life is working with young, young researchers, PhD students, early career researchers, watching them take their first tentative steps as they learn how to be a researcher. And the best part of my life is when they turn to the point where they've actually realized they've created a new idea of their own. I'm absolutely passionate about growing people. And the most important thing we do as researchers actually is grow people. It's the, it's the legacy we leave to the world. My next passion in life is I absolutely love working with the pharmaceutical industry in Ireland. I work very closely with many of the companies and I work very closely with them in particular as they're adopting more and more research and development activities here in Ireland. And in particular, I like to think that we may help them a little way along that journey. So helping those companies to, to move into a research and development space and ensure their future in this country is absolutely central to what I do. The other area that I'm passionate about is that Ireland as a country has a very ambitious vision for research. I think it's a really, over the last 15 years, what's happened in research in Ireland has been tremendously exciting. So one of my other passions in life is working at a national level and encouraging the development of policies to make sure that as we develop our research system, that enterprise in the country benefits from that and that we move forward together into a very exciting future. So what I want to talk to you about today is that last passion, the issue of research collaboration at the University Enterprise Interface. About 15 years ago, Ireland took a very brave step. Step. Prior to that, I started my research career here in 1991. And to be honest, it was a rather grim landscape. We all did the best we could, but there wasn't really that much opportunity for researchers in Ireland at that time. But around 98 and 99, there was this, an absolute step change. I describe it as a revolution in the research landscape in Ireland. And suddenly, at a policy level, there was a recognition that Ireland's future was about becoming a knowledge economy, becoming innovation based, becoming based on smart ideas, and making sure we develop an enterprise sector which is based on smart people and smart ideas and therefore the first steps were taken in building up a research landscape here investing in exciting new buildings equipment but most importantly of all investing in people bright people to explore their ideas and I can honestly say where we are now I wouldn't have even dreamt of 20 years ago it's been a tremendous very exciting journey but at the core of all of that investment was about developing a research landscape here which would be a key part of the foundation of enabling companies in Ireland to exploit research opportunities and ultimately leading to our economic growth. And in the current climate where, you know, the Celtic tiger is a dim, is, is a dim history, at this point in the current climate, the emphasis on making sure that our researchers in the, in the university sector link with the enterprise sector and lead to economic return has never been stronger. And I suppose the ideas I want to talk to you about today, that commitment at political level is absolutely very strong. What I want to talk to you about today is maybe we need to think a little differently about how we incentivize researchers to work with enterprise and how we measure success in this space. Because sometimes, particularly with researchers, what you measure is what you get, right? If you measure how, how tall the research labs are, they'll be tall, right? Um, so it's very important that you're measuring the right things to incentivize the right type of behavior. So this is what I want to share with you today and hopefully give you an insight into this space. So I suppose the first uh, point to recognize is that every country in the world wants innovation. Everyone wants the, the process where bright ideas, creative ideas, are turned into financial success. But as Jeff Nicholson said, 
these two uh, these two par research and innovation form part of an absolutely intertwined system if you want this part of the cycle you absolutely have to invest in the upper part you can't have the innovation without the creation of new knowledge and it's critical to understand this that particularly a country like this where the economic situation is quite challenging retaining that upper investment to make sure we get the return is extremely important and when you think about the nature of, of university industry interactions, there's a huge amount of activity at policy level at the moment to encourage the first the first activity here, to encourage research collaboration between research teams and companies. And indeed, my own lab, we're very fortunate to have a number of these research collaborations. So there are a lot of incentives, a lot of mechanisms to encourage people in this direction. What isn't spoken about very often is achieving a research collaboration is often built on a whole lot of other elements of relationships between a research team and a company. And in fact, the very best research collaborations, if you go in and poke beneath the surface, there's a matrix of interaction between the research team and the company built on all different types of relationships and they're part of building a trust, building an understanding and ultimately you get the goal of the research collaboration at the top. But you need to ensure in your developing mechanisms to facilitate and incentivize this that you're also incentivizing all these other building blocks along the way to ensure that you're building up really meaningful relationships which last in the long run. I point in particular to placements or internships where we place undergraduate students or postgraduate students in industry. Obviously the students may benefit enormously, but the most important income output for this is if we place a student in industry, one of us, I'll take the time to go and visit that student, and the conversation that you'll have over a cup of coffee with somebody in the company could be the most important output of that placement. So keeping those links and, and recognising that having a matrix of interactions is extremely important for long-term success in this game. And we need to make sure that our, our, our processes and our policies facilitate that. Even within research collaboration, it's important to mention, not all collaborations are the same. Right? There are many different types of collaborations. The one we usually think about is collaborative research, where researchers in a research team in the university and researchers in a company are genuinely working together towards a common goal. That's the really exciting space where exciting things happen. But there are other types of research. Contract research. For example, if a small company here wants to, get, wants to explore a new product, they may go to a university which has a specialized expertise, ask them to do a piece of research, and the outcomes of that go back to the company. That's that's also very important. And many companies come to a research team and support the PhD students and the postdocs within the research team. They're not necessarily interested in the nature of the research. They're very interested that there are bright people coming out the other end that they want in the long run. And all of these mechanisms are important, but the incentives you have to put in place to support each of these are quite different. So you need to make sure you're thinking about this in a more in-depth way than maybe a simplistic approach. And in fact, very exciting things are happening in this space. If you look at University College Cork, our research income from industry over the last couple of years is growing extremely rapidly. Researchers are being encouraged to engage with enterprise, they're responding, and we're seeing exciting new relationships as a result. And indeed, earlier this year, we were particularly delighted, um, Science Foundation Ireland announced the most ambitious research programme which was ever announced at the interface between the university and the enterprise earlier this year. A total funding programme of 300 million over the next six years to fund seven interdisciplinary centres. Of that 300 million, 100 million was provided by the industry partners. This is a large scale investment. And of those seven centres, four of them are led by University College Cork. One of them is co-led and we're significant partners in the other two. So these, this investment in research in, in UCC will completely uh, underpin our research infrastructure for the next seven years. And our success in this programme reflects the commitment of the researchers in UCC to work with enterprise partners at a really meaningful level. And just to give you an, an introduction to some of these centres, APC is a centre which is focused on the link between food and health, and in particular on the link between the microbes in our gut and health, and improving the outcomes for patients as a result. Infant is a research centre focused on perinatal health and in particular optimising the outcome for mothers and babies, making sure that premature babies have the best possible chance as they, as they move through their early months of life. Marai is focused on marine renewable energies, using wind and wave energy to generate electricity. And Ireland is probably one of the best place, places in the world to exploit marine renewable energies. 
IPIC at Tyndall is fo focused on the use of photonics, using light in information and communication technology. Insight is focused on big data. We've all heard about the cloud. How do you use big data and how do you analyze it? And the other two there, the SSPC is, fo fo is focused on the pharmaceutical air area and Amber is focused on materials. But what's hidden behind these stories here is that my office is currently embedded in developing 128 individual relationships with 128 enterprises. So the excitement that this brings to the industry academic landscape in, in UCC cannot be overstated. And indeed, many of you may have seen the Tyndall National Institute on, on television when Queen Elizabeth II visited just two years ago. This is an extraordinary research institute. About 400 researchers go in there every morning, focused entirely on their research. Fantastic environment. If you ever get an opportunity to visit it, it's well worth a visit. It's a, a world-renowned research institute. Scientists are very sad people. We like to measure things, and we like to compare things, and we like to look at numbers, right? So one of the ways we compare how good we are are things like the graphs I have here. We've invested as a country in research over the last 15 years. As a result, you see the number of publications, the number of papers that come out of that have grown. That might be expected. What's more important is the number of citations have grown. What does this mean? People elsewhere look at the papers coming out of research in Ireland and say, gosh, that's important. I'm going to talk about that. What's even more significant, if you look at the citations per paper, so for every paper that was published in the early part of this century, about four and a half citations per paper, now it's up to almost seven. What does that mean? In less than 10 years of research investment, the quality of the research coming out of the Irish laboratories had grown to that level. We've taken our place within a global research environment, and that was probably faster than anyone would have anticipated. When you think about turning research into economic impact, People often think about this linear model, and I have nightmares about this linear model, right? So people think about someone like me doing some basic research in a lab. I discover a widget. I do some applied research. I make the widget better, right? I then put a patent on it and protect it, and then we throw it over the wall to a company, right? So we either license it to an existing company, or we set up a starting company. We throw it over the wall. The company makes millions of widgets, and somebody makes a lot of money, right? And indeed, this linear model does sometimes happen. But it's by far an oversimplification of the way in which investment in research leads to economic return. And often our policies can be influenced by, if you do not understand the complexity of what you're talking about, the steps you take are not always appropriate. Now, what we do to measure success, so th the country is very interested in making sure the investment at this space returns the dollars at the end. So how do we measure it, right? So again, we're very good at measuring it. We measure things like the number of invention disclosures, the number of patents, the number of licenses to companies, and the number of spin-out companies. And you'll see here, again over the period, the growth as we invested in research in a country. And these metrics are very important. Universities all over the world measure all of these metrics. They're literally a measure of how good you are at turning your research into commercialization. And it's critically important that we continue to measure these metrics. However, I have concerns that by only measuring those metrics, you're in fact missing a lot of the complexity of the landscape. And in fact, there is much more to bringing the research activity out to bear on the enterprise landscape. And I must apologize for my dreadful graphics. But this arrow here is meant to represent the momentum of a research team. This is a research team like, like mine over the last 20 years, working through various programs, exploring ideas, lots of activity, right? Along the way, that research team may have a couple of partnerships with companies. So it may work with company one and it may work with company two. And on a good day, one of those partnerships may may turn into a successful commercial outcome, and that's very positive. However, what's more likely to happen is that when these people are meeting up and they have lunch afterwards, they might get to a much more, a much more useful idea which has a more important outcome. And what you often find is that as companies and research teams are working together, it's the tangential ideas, the way they touch off one another in unexpected ways, which can lead to the biggest wins. So for example, the people within a research team who might go out and work in a company, bringing with them particular skills and expertise, the people from the companies coming in and saying, why don't you try something that way? And suddenly something different happens. So you need to nurture the context just to drive the unexpected outcomes. And our policies need to make sure we're actually 
facilitating this conversion of people into partnership and the conversion of ideas into innovation. Now, in order to do that, you need to be very careful to put the correct mechanisms in place to incentivize behavior, and you also need to make sure you're measuring the correct outcomes. So, for example, a very important thing to measure might be this collaboration here with this company might have been facilitated by a grant. Go back five years later and ask, is that company still working with the research team? If it's still working with the research team after the grant, there's something very special going on. So the metrics you need to look at, repeat engagements, how many follow-up interactions there are, they're also extremely important. And we need to think about this in a much more nuanced way. Of course, one of the most important impacts of research in terms of economic growth is the people we put out our door, right? What you have here is a picture of a sunny day last July when the PhD graduates from UCC were emerging. Those PhD graduates are going out, many of them take their place within Irish enterprise, and our duty is to make sure that those people are equipped with the skills, not what the skills that enterprise today needs, but the skills that will drive the change in enterprise and that will enhance the, the creativity and the research activity we within the enterprise sector in Ireland. And they really are the future. And in all of the discussions that there are about facilitating university enterprise engagement, contributing to economic growth, we need to always remember our primary role is, is, is producing people and make sure that we facilitate and enhance that in every way we possibly can. I suppose in conclusion, I'd like to say that success at the university industry interface is really finding ways to develop very meaningful relationships, not simple relationships, complex relationships, where there are multiple engagements, where people are working together, each partner respecting the other and bringing to the table the multiplicity of skills and opportunities they have. The challenges are to make sure that we're agile. For universities to work on the time scale that a company needs takes a lot of agility and you need to work at that. You need to be a efficient in the way you work with a partner and you need to make sure you develop those partnerships, you nurture them, you value the relationships. And indeed I'm very I'm very confident that the, the way in which the system here in Ireland has been developed over the last 10 years or so will continue to develop into the future. I'd like to conclude with some words from a man who's much wiser than I am. He's the president of Stanford University. And the interesting point of his message here was he was saying the point of research within a university system is about getting it out there, getting it working, getting companies growing. And the critical issue, as he said, is that we should think about universities as a force for economic growth. And I think within the research landscape in Ireland, that was never more true. The commitment I see to our leading researchers to work with small companies and encourage them to reach out and, and reach their full potential has never been stronger. I see a very optimistic future and I look forward to, uh, to, to working with many people as this is developed. Thank you very much.